It's red, it's fast, and it's Italian. Our bike means so much to so many people because it's a bike that is linked and is born in a territory. A bike born in La Terra di Motori, the land of engines. Working here, it's, I think it's like being in love with a really beautiful woman. It is a uniquely Italian form of beauty, created to dazzle the senses. Our bikes should take the Italian design outside Italy, no? They are motorcycles crafted with Italian flair and built with passion. This company is run by passion, and it starts with everybody being a motorcyclist. It is a company founded by three brothers who surprisingly never intended to build a motorcycle. Candidly, it's a whole lot of work, and if you don't love motorcycles, there's probably better things to do in life. This is the story of a company that began by making radios. So how did they end up creating some of the fastest and most stunning motorcycles in the world? The answer begins with just one word. Ducati. Romagna is a region of northern Italy. Its name has its roots in antiquity. Emilia refers to Via Emilia, the original road connecting northern Italy to Rome. Romagna describes part of the Roman Empire during the Middle Ages. Today, Emilia Romagna is a region also known as Motor Valley because some of the most famous and exclusive automotive and motorcycle brands in the world can be found here. Around here, 50 miles from Ducati, you get, uh, you know, Maserati, Lamborghini, you get Ferrari, and in every single garage in this area, there is somebody that is trying to get something to go faster. It doesn't matter if it's a food processor, a car, or a bike. <laughs> Going faster is a way of life in northern Italy, especially in Ducati's hometown of Bologna, where the passion for speed goes hand in hand with a unique passion for the brand, a passion shared by the people who build the bikes with the people who ride them. In our bike, you have a piece of the territory. You have a piece of the heart of the people that work in this territory. People that are suppliers, that are riders, that are our workers, our engineers, all from the Bologna University, they are born with this passion in their heart and they manage to transmit it to the bike. And that's what I think sets our bikes apart. It is a unique two-wheeled passion that often leads people who build Ducatis to defy any obvious sense of reason or rationale for what they do. We do sometimes bikes that have not a real uh, reason to exist, you know? It's a pretty irrational object anyway. You know, no, nobody really needs one of these, but it's pretty cool to have it, you know? We are paid to do a job that maybe we will do uh, just free of charge, you know, just, just for fun. And that's really something that is unbelievable. We don't have employees here, we have community members. And we do not have customers outside here, we have community members. We all love the same product, which is the motorcycle. community with its own name. Around the world, people who build, ride, or lust after Ducatis are known as Ducatista. So Ducatista is a person that doesn't want just the bike, doesn't want just, it's not a commodity. Uh, it's not buying a commodity, it's buying something uh, uh, that makes him feel special. This is a Ducatista for me. 
I think uh, Ducatista is a biker, is a, a real biker. that enjoy to drive the bike, red racing bike, Italian, without compromise. Racing has always been the heart and soul of Ducati. The company has won more World Superbike Championships than any other manufacturer, while beating incredible odds along the way. But racing is a risky business. Try to imagine the risk of not being successful. Uh, we could have put our reputation uh, in a dustbin. <laughs> Yet racing is how Ducati competes against the giants of the motorcycle business. For every bike Ducati builds and sells, Honda, the world's largest motorcycle company, cranks out nearly 400 motorcycles. Ducati is the David versus Goliath of the motorcycle world, and David keeps winning. Honda builds around 13 million of bikes a year we build around 35,000. You know, racing for us is all about winning. Uh, you, you don't race if you don't win. We don't like to participate, we like to win. Today, winning is what Ducati is about. But racing was never part of the plan when Ducati was first founded. In fact, motorcycles weren't part of the plan either. Ducati's history begins in 1926, when three brothers decided to create a business. The brothers are inspired by the remarkable inventions of a local man named Guglielmo Marconi. He also lives in Bologna and wins the Nobel Prize for creating the first wireless telegraph for use on board ships at sea. Marconi's next invention is the common household radio. Fascinated by Marconi's work and believing there was money to be made in the new world of electronics, the Ducati brothers open a small factory to build electrical components. Soon, they are selling complete radios, an early electric calculator, and even an electric shaver. In 1935, construction begins on a new Ducati factory, personally designed by Bruno Cavallari Ducati, one of the three brothers. When construction ends, the new Ducati factory is one of the most modern electronics factories in the world and attracts other technology companies to Bologna. It is an early example of clustering, when like-minded technology companies are all in one place and the new Ducati factory becomes the center of an Italian version of a very early Silicon Valley. But the start of World War II changes everything. When German troops invade Italy, they force the factory to make military radio equipment. A U.S. Army Air Corps memo labels Ducati a military target. And on October 12, 1944, Operation Pancake is put into action. Seventy-five American B-24 bombers take off from Stenora, Italy, and fly north, arriving over Bologna at 12.45 in the afternoon with one goal in mind, destroy the factory. These are actual bombsite photos showing some of the 750 bombs that are dropped. By 1 p.m. local time, the Ducati factory is leveled. Priority after World War II in Italy was surviving. To survive as a company, the Ducati brothers decide to drastically change their business. Instead of making radios, they will fill the need for cheap basic transportation in post-war Italy. It is a decision that will forever change the course of Ducati. In 
In 1946, Ducati builds a tiny engine called the Cuchillo and mounts it to an old bicycle frame. That's the beginning of the story. The seed that grows the tree of tradition in Ducati, that engine was the Cuchillo, or in English, Papi. The Cuchillo makes just one and a half horsepower, but what's really important about the tiny little engine is that it is the first new mechanical device of any kind to be manufactured anywhere in post-war Europe. The remarkable success of the Cuchillo will lead to Ducati's first complete motorcycle. In 1950, Ducati introduces the 60 Sport. It is the first true Ducati motorcycle with a top speed of 40 miles an hour. The 60 Sport paves the way for Ducati's next great milestone. Only it's not a motorcycle. It's a man who is fascinated by racing. In 1954, the company hires a young engineer named Fabio Taglioni. He is a recent graduate from the University of Bologna, one of Europe's oldest universities and a school famous for its science and engineering programs. But it's Taglioni's passion for racing that transforms Ducati forever. The genius idea of uh, Taglioni was creating the first ever race bike, the Grand Sport. In 1956, uh, Taglioni developed for Ducati the first concept of, of a 1 to 5 Grand Prix Desmo. The bike was not developed for being a bike for races on the road, but races all around the world. Taglioni's creation of the 125 Grand Prix Desmo instantly creates a type of dual personality for Ducati. On one hand, Ducati makes its money selling street bikes to the public. But on the other hand, its sales are the result of the fame Ducati achieves on the racetrack. Ducati's racing image becomes immortalized in 1956 when the 125 Desmo wins the Swedish Grand Prix. Ducati's racing legacy continues to grow in the 60s with an English rider on board a very special Ducati. One of 2,000 Ducatis all bought by just one man. Mike Elwood was just a boy of uh, 19 years old in 1959 when he was officialized as a Ducati rider. And the father came in Ducati and paid for a bike, the 250 twin cylinder Desmo, just for him. These days, no fathers can pay to his uh, son, even if he could be a, a master of speed uh, on MotoGP or Superbike. Actually, Mike Halewood's father, Stan, couldn't convince the factory to build just one bike for his son. So he orders 2,000 motorcycles. The result, Mike Halewood becomes a legend on the track. And Stan Halewood? becomes the very first Ducati dealer in Britain. A decade later, another English rider, Paul Smart, would ride another new Ducati racing bike, the Victory. So we started with the 750. It was the bike that allowed to Paul Smart and Bruno Spazzari to conquer the first and the second place at the 200 miles of Imola in 1972. We beaten the scary monster of that age, uh, Giacomo Agostini, with the Envy Augustus. 